such an honor to be here today, and I'm extremely grateful to the leadership of the fellowship. I was born um, the seventh out of ten children, and very early in life, from two wives, so don't fear for the mother. Very early in life, I discovered there were two sides to being what I call a middle-born. The good side was the fact that when we, the children, got in trouble, um, it was either our father would deal with the elder ones for misleading us, or if there had to be punishment meted out, if he had to cane us, if he was giving five strokes each, by the time he went from one, two, three, four, five, before he got to me, he'll be tired, so it was less. So I enjoyed it that way, I enjoyed being in the middle. What I didn't like very much, among other things, because there was a challenge of when they share meat, you'll be one of the last to take. But what really got to me was the fact that decisions, I didn't seem to matter very much in the scheme of things. You know, they'll make decisions and I'll just see that something is happening. Nobody will call me to say, okay, this is happening. The elder ones are told because they have to take care of the house. The younger ones have to be petted so they don't cry when our parents are traveling. But me, nobody really cared. So I almost felt like I was invisible. And even as a small girl, it really bothered me. I didn't like it at all. What, what really brought this issue to, that really made it hurt for me was um, at about eight and a half years, I noticed that my mother stopped cooking in the general kitchen. She was cooking in her room. And then a little while after that, she packed up her things and left with my younger sister, who was about under a year. Um, the first repercussion of that was that I was left to cater for my little brother, who was three. So I became a mother very early. I enjoyed that part. I didn't complain. But what really pained me was that nobody explained to me. Nobody told me what was happening. So at that age, I sat and I thought, is this how my life is going to go on? I'm just going to be, you know, just there. No, not really matter. So at a very young age, I made up my mind. I said, I'm really going to succeed. I'll succeed so well that nobody can ignore me. And I was ready to succeed at any cost. So I was so determined. I had my heart set on it. Every day of my life, you know, seemed to reinforce this belief. You must make a mark. You must make a difference. Your seniors must recognize. It was really important to me. But then I think God saw the way I was going and knew it was dangerous because I was set on it. And then very early in life, at the age of 13, he arrested me. In the FCS, I gave my life to Christ. And that totally changed my perspective. I went from seeing myself as a disadvantaged child from being in the center and not mattering to seeing that I'm the seventh person and probably the person that will be perfecting the history of my, my family. And then I grew in stature with God. I, I really felt love, felt peace. But then that was disrupted again in my 100 level. Suddenly, my brother came to Guagualada. We're living in Abuja. My father was working. And then he was looking funny, but he couldn't tell me. He took me and he told me, let's go back home. My aunt also followed us. In the car, I noticed they were behaving funny, but nobody could tell me. Until I got home, nobody could tell me. Until I got into the palo and I saw that I was being taken home because my father had died the previous night. That totally destroyed me. I remember I collapsed and it took them time to revive me. Because, in fact, God just sent someone who is a medical doctor as well as a pastor, Paul and Angel. He walked in at that time and they were able to revive me. But I got up from there even more firstly disturbed. So I, I don't matter so much that I'm in this city. Nobody can come and say, your dad is sick, come and see. And I was so much more convinced because I felt if I was there, he wouldn't have died. But then, because of the seeds of the word of God that had been sown in me and had taken root, God didn't allow the devil, let, allow that drag me out of his presence. But while, it was while I was trying to overcome the bitterness and the struggle with this time that I read a book where John Wesley made a statement, and that statement changed my life forever. The statement he made was that, he said, I'm an arrow coming from eternity and I'm passing through time. I have one goal and one goal alone, to pass through time successfully and to arrive eternity accomplished. That statement just became the, the solid foundation on which I worked. I decided that if God already understands that I must be successful on this earth, then maybe I should lay down my, my ambitions and striving for success at his feet. So I did that, but I had a very little nagging in my spirit because I grew up in the SU system and I didn't like something about it. It appeared that people, we were only concerned about salvation, ministering to others, evangelism, and then eternity. So I began to wonder, does that mean the time on earth here, I wouldn't have anything to show for it. This is how I would just die. I felt, well, if I'm going to give up things for God, no problem, I'll do it. But then God sent someone that totally changed that to me, for me. In my 300 level, somebody came from town to talk to us before our exams to tell us about success. And then this man was talking so much scripture. 
He didn't open his Bible. He was just, I was just, I just fell in love with the way he knew the Bible. But what really touched me was that he appeared to be successful. He appeared to be a success in his field. After I made inquiries after the fellowship, I get to understand that he was a full gospel member. He was a successful lawyer in the city. He had a school. He was Barista Panachi. And so when um, my husband proposed to me, one of the reasons I agreed was because I already heard about full gospel and I wanted to be a part of it. And that totally changed life for me because at this point I'd surrender. I'd say, okay, God, I do want to matter, but that doesn't matter now. I hand over to you. But men and brethren, I came to understand something. A few years after I've been following God consistently now for a little over 24 years, I came to understand, I came to realize that there were things I thought I was craving. And the place God had gently guided me to were far above what I could ask, think, or begin to imagine. It is when I have opportunities to share like this, I begin to think back. I've been recognized in my field locally and internationally in Hollywood, so many places. I've had opportunity to share platforms and to give business ideas and share with people who are only saw on television or on the covers of magazine when I was a little child. And when I thought back, I realized that the moment I laid down my own ambition, God brought something beautiful out of it. I'll give you an example. A few months ago, I was invited to speak at uh, Fair Babala University at Ekiti. And my, I thought I was just going to speak to students, and I really loved doing that. But I got there and I realized there were about 17 professors that were going to listen to me, including the owner of the school. That almost shook me a bit, but I went ahead and delivered. And at the end, a lot of the professors, at least four, approached me. And they wanted to know. They said, oh, so where did you study? I said, Guagualada. No, we mean your doctorate. Where did you do your doctorate? I said, I don't have a doctorate yet. And I had professors, renowned professors, who have published their articles on innovation and entrepreneurship, which I spoke on, who has published on Harvard Business Review, asking me, please go to this page, look at this article, and give me your opinion. What do you think? If I was going to do a doctorate, I probably wouldn't get an opportunity for them to even be the one supervising me. But God had taken me from a place where I didn't, of course, matter, to a place I never imagined. What really beat me that day was, at the end of it, Are himself called me, the owner of the university. And he said to me, first of all, he said, don't be offended. What's, how old are you? I told him. And then he lowered his voice because I was there. He said, now tell me the truth. Where did you learn these things? <laughs> you know? And it was another opportunity for me to share the goodness of God. I realized two things. One of them is the fact that God is interested in your success. He's interested in your daily life. He doesn't just call you, send you out to work. He's interested in your daily life, one, because that is the means by which you will reach out to others. The platforms I've gotten to reach out to people, I never would have, if not for the opportunities God has given me through books I've written and opportunities I've had. Secondly, I recognize also that in laying down your ambitions for what God wants you to do, you're not making any sacrifice. Because more all the time, not more often than not, what he will bring out of that ambition you laid down at his feet is far more than you can ever begin to imagine. So this is how God has blessed me, taking me from a place of feeling like a non-entity to making me somebody and counting in the League of Nations. Finally, I want to really thank God for where he has kept our family. I remember when I had my second child, I suffered from pile. And then... It wasn't just the pain, which was severe. I felt it was worse than labor pain. It was also the fact that my father had died from complications from an, a pile operation. So for me, it was just like, a, hey, what took your father has come for you? I didn't really share that with my husband, but I had this morbid fear. I was really scared. So I was sitting in the toilet. I hated, I didn't want to eat because he had to take me to the toilet. So one day while I was sitting, thinking about my life, wondering how this situation in the toilet was going to go, my husband came into the toilet looking very angry. I wasn't sure what annoyed him, whether it was being left with the baby to cry all the time because I had a newborn baby, or because he was angry with the devil. But he just placed his hands on my head and he said, I rebuke that spirit, go. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last I heard of Pyle. When I was having my last child, the gynecologist told me, oh, I see you have a history. It may reoccur again if you do labor and till eternity. It has gone and has never, never plans to return again. So much to say, but time fails me. But I want to commend you to God and to his grace, which is able to deliver us from our paltry and miserable ambitions and make out of us what we never, were never able to think or begin to imagine. Thank you very much. Love.
I'm sure you have been blessed today. If you just made a decision for Jesus Christ, why don't you write to us? And we shall send you a free copy of our booklet, Now That You Have Received Christ. And should you want to be a part of our worldwide fellowship of businessmen and women, contact us at the best hotel around you or Ibadan, full gospel area office. Precious blood of